Hey, thank you for uh, following the First Middle Church of Christ. We're really glad to have you. Hope you're having a wonderful day out there today, and God has been blessing you. You know, we're here to celebrate the love of God through our powerful messages, and we invite you to join us on our journey of faith and fellowship by connecting with us on our social media platforms. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Stay updated on our inspirational content. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, where you can experience our powerful messages that can help you and encourage you in your walk with the Lord. And be sure to pass them along to your family and friends. By becoming a part of our online community, we have the opportunity to engage with fellow believers, be encouraged in your faith journey, and experience the transformative power of God's love through our messages. And together, let's spread the message of love and hope to the world. And join us online and be a part of our growing community as we worship, learn, and serve together. I want to talk to you today about even the devil believes. In Christian theology, the belief of the devil in Christ is a complex and debated topic. Now, the Bible doesn't explicitly state whether the devil believes in Christ, but it does provide insight into the nature of the devil's beliefs and actions. James 2.19 states that you say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. See, this verse suggests that the demons, which can be understood as including the devil, believes in the existence of God in the foundational truths of the Christian faith. However, the belief does not lead to salvation or a transformed relationship with God. Instead, it leads to fear and trembling, as it indicated in James' text, indicating a recognition of God's power and authority. And furthermore, the Gospel of Matthew, there are instances where demons acknowledge Jesus as the Son of God. For example, Matthew 8, 29, when Jesus encountered the, the two demon-possessed men, the demon cried out, What do you want with us, Son of God? Have you came here to torture us before the appointed time? This acknowledgement of Jesus' identity demonstrates that the demons, including the devil, have a certain level of knowledge about and belief in Christ. The devil's belief, as depicted in Christian theology and the Bible, are characterized by a combination of knowledge, rebellion, and opposition. While the devil and demons acknowledge the existence and identity of God and Christ, their beliefs are fundamentally different from the saving faith that leads to a restored relationship with God. Intellectual knowledge. You see, the devil's beliefs are marked by intellectual knowledge and accomplishments uh, of certain truths. As mentioned earlier, the demons, including the devil, believe in the existence of God and the foundational truths of the Christian faith. They understand who Jesus is and acknowledges his authority and power. The devil possesses intellectual knowledge and understanding of God's existence, the nature of Christ. This knowledge is evident in the devil's interactions with Jesus, where he acknowledges Jesus as the Son of God in Matthew 8, 29, and attempts to twist the scriptures in his temptations in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. The rebellion and opposition. Now, despite their knowledge, the devil's beliefs are intertwined with rebellion and opposition to God. The devil's primary aim is to oppose God's purpose and to lead humanity away from God. This opposition is evident in various biblical accounts, such as the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness, Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 11, where the devil sought to lead Jesus astray and undermine his mention. The devil beliefs are driven by rebellion and pride. His intentional rebellion against God is expected in Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. It reflects his desire to exalt himself above God and assert his own will. This rebellious mindset shapes his beliefs and actions, leading to a continuous opposition to God's authority. Fear and trembling. The devil's beliefs are also characterized by fear and trembling, as mentioned in James 2.19. While the demons acknowledge God's existence and authority, the recognition does not lead to repentance or a transformed relationship with God. Instead, it leads to fear of an awareness of their impending judgment. Deception and falsehood. The devil's beliefs also involve deception and falsehood. In the Bible, the devil is described as a father of lies, John 8, 44, 
and has wanted to deceive the whole world, Revelation 12, 9. His beliefs are intertwined with a deliberate campaign of deceit and distortion of the truth in order to lead people away from God. His deceptive nature. The devil's beliefs are intertwined with deception and falsehood, and he is known for distorting the truth in order to lead people astray. His deceptive nature influences his beliefs as he seeks to undermine God's truth and lead humanity into error. It's important to consider the, the nature of the devil's motivations and goals, which are intertwined with his beliefs and actions, like pride and self-exaltion. The devil's beliefs are closely tied to his pride and desire for self-explanation. Uh, in the book of Isaiah, there is a passage often associated with the fall of Lucifer, who became the devil due to his pride and desire to exalt himself above God. In Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 14, it describes his rebellious intent. How are you, how you are fallen from heaven, O shining star, son of the morning? You have been thrown down to the earth, who you destroyed the nations of the world. For you said to yourself, I will ascend to heaven and set my throne above God's stars. I will preside on the mountains of the gods far away in the north. I will climb to the highest heavens and be like the most high. His temptation and corruption. See, the devil's beliefs manifest in his role as a tempter and corrupter. In the gospel accounts, the devil is displayed as an actively seeking to tempt and lead people away from God. For instance, in the temptation of Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 to 11, the devil sought to corrupt Jesus' mention and lead him astray. Similarly, the devil continues to tempt and deceive people in an attempt to draw them away from God and into sin. His goal is to corrupt and undermine the righteousness and faithfulness of God's creation. In his destructive intent, the devil's beliefs are also characterized by a destructive intent toward humanity. In the book of John, Jesus describes the devil as a thief who comes to steal and kill and destroy, John 10.10. 10. This reflects the devil's uh, malefant intent to undermine God's work and to bring harm and destruction to God's creation. His adversarial role. The devil's beliefs are inherently adversarial to God and his purpose. Throughout the Bible, the devil is split that has the adversary, the accuser, and the one who opposes the plan of God and seeks to dwarf his redemptive work. Counterfeit and limitation. The devil's beliefs are closely tied to his strategy of creating counterfeit and imitation. In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul warns about the devil's ability to masquerade as an angel of light, 2 Corinthians 11:14. This reflects the devil's deceptive nature of his effort to mimic or counterfeit the work of God in order to lead people astray by promoting false teachings and ideologies that imitate the truth of God's word. Accusations and Opposition the devil's actions include accusations against believers in opposition to God's purpose. In the book of Job, the devil is seen accusing Job before God, Job 1, 9-11. And in the New Testament, he is described as the accuser of the brethren, Revelation 12, 10. His opposition extends to strive against the work of God in the lives of believers and in the world. His schemes of spiritual warfare. The devil's beliefs are manifested in his schemes and involvement in spiritual warfare. In the book of Ephesians, Paul writes us, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against the evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against the mighty powers in this dark world, and against the evil spirits in the heavenly places. Ephesians 6.12 This verse underscores the devil's strategy and organized efforts to oppose God's kingdom and to engage in spiritual warfare against believers. See, the devil engages in spiritual warfare, seeking to thwart God's redemptive work and to hinder the advancement of God's kingdom. Warfare includes strategic and organized efforts to deceive, divide, and undermine the faith of believers, as well as to resist the spread of the gospel. You see, the devil's actions are driven by a destructive intent toward humanity. In the New Testament, particularly in the Gospel of John, Jesus describes the devil as a thief who comes to steal, and kill, and destroy, John 10.10. 10. This reflects the monophant intent of the devil to bring harm, chaos, and destruction to God's creation and to undermine the well-being of humanity. The devil's actions include sowing discord, division, and confusion. He seeks to create strife and disunity among people, causing conflicts, hatred, and division within communities, and even among believers. 
His aim is to distort relationships and to undermine the unity and peace that God desires for all his creation. The devil's actions involve manipulation and temptation. And throughout the Bible, the devil is suspected as using cunning and manipulative tactics to lead people astray. His temptations often appeal to human weakness, desires, and vulnerabilities, aiming to draw individuals away from obedience to God and into sin. The devil's actions include the distortion and misrepresentation of God's word. He seeks to twist and, per and pervert the truth revealed in scripture, leading people to misunderstand or reject God's message. This distortion can create confusion and hinder individuals from experiencing the fullness of God's truth and grace. While the devil's beliefs are characterized by rebellion, deceit, and opposition to God, it is important to note that according to Christian theology, his ultimate defeat is assured. In the book of Revelation, the final judgment and the ultimate victory of God over the devil and his followers are depicted. Revelation 20.10 It describes the devil's ultimate fate. And the devil who deceived him was thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur, joining the beast and the false prophet. There they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. The devil's actions are ultimately in vain. As his effort to oppose God's purpose will be thwarted, and he will face eternal judgment for his rebellion and maleficent activities. The devil's actions include exhorting influence and temptation on the individuals and societies. He seeks to entice people away from God's will and lead them into disobedience and sin. His influence can be seen in various aspects of human life, including culture, institutions, and personal behavior. The devil's temptations often exploit human vulnerabilities, such as pride, greed, and selfishness. By appealing to these weaknesses, he attempts to draw people away from God and toward destructive and self-destructive behaviors. The devil is afflicted as activity binding the minds of believers to prevent them from seeing and understanding the truth of the gospel. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. His actions hinder people from embracing the message of salvation and experiencing the transformative power of God's grace. The devil spiritually binding and hindrance contributes to an ongoing spiritual warfare described in the New Testament, where believers are called to stand firm against the devil's schemes and to resist his efforts to undermine their faith. Ephesians 6, 11, and 12. The devil's actions involve promoting falsehood and idolatry. He seeks to lead people into worship of worshiping false, false gods, ideologies, and values that are contrary to the truth revealed in Scripture. By promoting falsehood and idolatry, he seeks to draw people away from the worship of the one true God. The devil's influences in promoting falsehood and idolatry can be seen throughout human history, as societies and individuals have, have been led astray by false belief systems and practices that detach from the worship and recognition of God's sovereignty. These additional aspects further illustrate the multifaceted nature of the devil's beliefs and actions, highlighting an ongoing effort to oppose God, deceive humanity, and lead people away from the truth and redemptive work of God. In conclusion, the devil's beliefs and actions are understood in Christian theology and biblical teachings, encompass a range of destructive, manipulative, and diverse behaviors driven by pride, rebellion, and opposition to God. But however, according to Christian belief, the devil's ultimate defeat is certain, and his efforts to undermine God's redemptive plan will ultimately be overcome by the sovereignty and the power of God. However, the devil's belief is not characterized by trust, submission, or genuine faith in Christ for salvation, but instead it is marked by rebellion, opposition, and fear of judgment. So in summary, the devil's beliefs are closely intertwined with his motivation and goals, which include pride, self-exaltion, temptation, corruption, a destructive intent toward humanity, and an adversarial role in opposition to God. These aspects further illustrate the nature of the devil's beliefs and their implications for his actions and influence in the world.